Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. We are talking about recombinant DNA technology and we talked about the big picture of recombinant DNA technology, the overview of molecular cloning. Uh, recombinant DNA technology is used in vast regions of biology. It has a huge applications. But most of the time we usually talk about molecular cloning when we want to talk about recombinant DNA technology. So we talked about cloning, we talked about the vectors which is associated part of cloning. Now in this video I am going to talk about uh, different gene libraries. So what are these genetic libraries that we know of and how they function and why they are important uh, for us. So let's talk about genetic libraries. So genetic libraries are of majorly two different types. One is the genomic libraries, or genomic DNA library, and the second type is C DNA library. C DNA library is also known as complementary DNA library. Genomic DNA library is different thing. So what are these two things, genomic library and cDNA library, what are the difference between the two stuff that we are going to talk about. So the first thing is what is genetic libraries, what are these libraries, you know what libraries are for, libraries are for storing uh, copies of same things there like for books, a library contains many different books, their different copies will be stored there. Same type of things. Library of books means it will contain many varieties of books. Library of food means it contains multiple varieties of food. Library of shoe means it contains multiple copies of shoes. Actually the term came from the bookshelf and the idea of books. But now it is applied here in the genetic level. When we genetic library means we use genes and we store genes there. Many copies of the genes. Whatever genes are there. We call it genetic library, right? So where do we store the genes? It's not like there's a lockers where you put the genes and lock it up. It's not like that, obviously. Uh, there should be some host to carry those genes uh, where we insert our gene and the gene is safe with the host. So we need to rely on the cloning approach. We need to insert our target gene that we want to uh, put into the library. And we need to insert that gene into a vector and then put that vector containing our target gene inside a host, it could be bacteria, it could be, most of the cases it is bacteria, like E. coli or many other type of bacteria that we can take. Now this bacterial cell contain the genetic element and we have petri plate, where in the petri dish uh, different bacterial colonies we can find and in all those colonies there are different genes placed. So let's say there is a, there's a petri plate in your hand contains multiple colonies and all those colonies contain all the varieties of genes that is present in E. coli cell. So that will be the genomic library of E. coli in a petri plate. So the library in this case is in petri dish. So in petri dish we have the library of an organism's whole genome. For example I told you about the genome of E. coli here. But for, for the other cases where we are talking about genome of uh, eukaryotes, in that case it's not enough uh, to to put everything there in one petri plate because uh, the number of genes uh, one we get from cleaving the DNA of eukaryotic cell will be huge, it will be more. So in that case we need to use multiple uh, such petri dishes, multiple such uh, carrying containers to put all those things, multiple cells to carry all those genes there. But the thing is it's a representation of all the genetic content will be known as the genomic DNA library. For example in human. In human, it contains a huge genome in our body, it contains multiple genes, many number of genes. So if you take all those genes, we cleave those genes from different places and take each genes apart and put each genes in each vector and place it inside a host cell. For example, it's an E. coli cell. In that case, all the representation, representation of all the genes that are found in our body, if we place them, it will be known as the whole genome library or genomic DNA library of human being. We can do that not only for humans, for any other organism in planet. If we know about the sequence, we cleave it, we insert it and we make the library. 
same thing and why we require this stuff actually why we require this library to occur because we need these libraries because uh, let's say uh, you want to work with a specific gene right of human you know that gene this is a human gene you want to work with for your research now it's very tedious if each time you need to go for your human genome take that cut that gene out clone that it's very very tedious so to minimize that task what we need to do we will do that we will prepare the library throughout the time you know this is the library just like once you know to find a note from a book you have a, you, know, you need to make the note for biochemistry so you know from where you need to make the note you know the name of the book so what will you do if you know that you can directly go to the library pick that book you can get your note so it's that easy if you don't know in which book it is you need to completely spread through the whole content of books to find out that it's hugely tedious and time consuming to prevent this time consumption to prevent this process if we need this genomic libraries we prepare the libraries so that we can get uh, any gene we want uh, by screening the libraries so there are two stages for this library one is the preparation of the library we store all the data of the gene uh, gene data in those libraries second is the uh, screening of the libraries preparation of the library and screening preparation means we put all the genes and we put it into the vector insert it into the uh, to the bacterial cell to create that genomic library it takes some time but it will take only once but in future whenever you want to do that we simply do that again and again by taking it directly okay while in the other hand the screening of this is slightly different the screening is when you want to get uh, a specific gene a target gene suppose you want to work with uh, uh, a specific gene insulin gene of human being so you want to take that gene so what will you do you know where exactly it is placed in the library so you know there is a there is a petri plate in that petri plate there are different bacterial cells bacterial colonies are there you, you know some of the colony contain that gene you don't know what exactly which one exactly but you know that definitely is somewhere between <coughs> so what will you do is simply you will screen this library you will find the target gene by designing what is called single stranded dna as a hybridizing so what we have in the screening you know that uh, your target bacteria your target gene is somewhere there in this petri plate you know that now you need to find that gene and you also know the sequence of that gene so you can design say you know the sequence so you, what you can make you make this target gene single stranded and what you do you will make your a probe dna which is also single stranded complementary to your target dna which is attached to some kind of uh, radioactive molecules or let's say it's attached to some fluorescent molecules you add that and and whenever that complementary nature is found it will be bound and they will give you some signal fluorescent signal which you can receive and by receiving that signal you can tell the exact location of your gene in this whole library this is a way to screen there are multiple ways to screen genomic libraries but this is a way to screen it you can screen your dna out and then you can talk about that you can take it out you can you can uh, do experiments with your gene this is the idea of genomic dna library and how we prepare genomic dna library we prepare genomic dna library with cloning approach we need cloning we need molecular dna technology we need recombinant dna technology to do that because we have uh, let's say the complete genome genomic dna library means the representation of all the gene that an organism have so whatever chromosomal element is present whatever genomic dna is present we will fragmentize it into small small fraction we'll break it down in small fractions we we'll break it down in small fractions so we have from fractions of different genes 1 2 3 gene numbers i am giving you 7 8 9 etc and all the genes so we'll fragmentize into all the genes it might contain more than one genes in one but it can carry multiple genes but all the genes that are available now what we do we have vectors you know the vector we already talked about which is a gene carrying vehicle which helps the gene target dna to be delivered into a host cell so in all those vectors we will add those fragment of the genes in one we have one in another two three so we'll add it so we create this recombinant dna a recombinant vectors but joining our vector with the target dna that we want to 
put into the library. So that's how we create a set of recombinant vectors. Now each of those vectors we insert them into a specific host bacterial cell. And then we allow this cell to grow and we plate them into an agar plate which, which contains the bacterial media. So it can easily grow there. The cells will grow and they will carry each segment of this whole chromosome whole chromosomal DNA. So now what we if we look at this plate that plate contains all the genes and that will contain as a colonies inside each of the bacterial cell they contain different different genes are present in different bacterial cells there and this is the idea to create it. Now believe me that creation of genomic DNA library is tedious but screening is much more complicated because in creation it requires some time you know it's not that linear because sometimes you know some cell most of the cells get same type of genes and some of the those genes may not be inserted in any of the cell so these things happen you need to recheck it once and twice and multiple times to make sure that all the desired genes are inserted into the vector and they are inserted into the host cell properly but this is the first stage of preparation but the second stage is much more difficult that is the screening. Screening means you need to find out the gene you want to work with and in that case you need to apply the probes and the probes should bind correctly. There are multiple stuff, self hybridization and many different issues out there because you know you, you don't know where exactly uh, the gene of interest is present, in which cell it is present, in which colony it is present. You just know it is uh, in the plate, it is in an agar plate multiple bacterial colonies you know you don't know in which one in which cell uh, this gene of interest is present so you need to add some probe with we call it a colony hybridization assay where in the these are the colonies we treat it with some enzymes for all the dna that is present in the bacteria becomes single stranded then we add a single stranded probe complementary to, to that so that it can go and bind. Now there are problems like sometimes this specific sequence can bind with some other gene or regions partially that can give a signal also. So there's some background noises and stuff. But it's tedious and uh, we need to make sure after after picking up the right colony, we take the take the culture from it, we take the uh, bacterial cell from it, we we grow the cell into the culture and then take this out and we extract the DNA then run a gel to confirm that yes, the gene we want to find, we got it. So this is the idea of screening of genomic DNA library. It's much bigger and to construct this huge amount of genetic content in different vectors and put it there, we require large vectors, vectors with large capabilities, huge genetic element containing capabilities. So we most of the time uses, uh, we use here uh, the phage vector, the lambda phage vector. Uh, or we use a phage mid vectors a different type we can use a bacterial artificial chromosome also to do these things okay so this is the genomic DNA library in a whole now what is cDNA library cDNA library in this case is a different kind where cDNA library is much more smaller much more simpler compared with the genomic library cDNA library is the representation of only the coding region of the gene of the eukaryotic cell Right? Because you know you can prepare the genomic DNA library of prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes. You can express them in prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes. But in cDNA library you cannot express that for prokaryotes. Because prokaryotes uh, does not involve the mechanism of splicing. So it's not been there. We mainly do cDNA library for the eukaryotic organisms and the genome of eukaryotes. Why? Because the genome of eukaryotes contain two types of elements in their RNA. One is in introns and exons. Introns are the non-coding elements while exons are the coding elements. So the gene element, if you look at the genome of human being, it's, it's, let's say this is the genome of human being, it's a huge. But now if you delete all the in, intron parts from the RNA, now let's say this is the RNA content of human genome which is huge, contains introns and exons. Now, if you cut out the introns and only take the exons, you find it's much less complicated because most of the DNA portions are filled with this introns, okay? So, you want only these exons because exons are the coding elements. So, what we need in some cases, we need some coding elements only. In eukaryotes, we don't want this whole genome to clone. We want only some only those portion of the genome to clone which 
contains the coding element. Why? Because for example, say we want to express those genes using expression vector in different hosts. So why we clone whole, whole genome then? If we want to express a particular gene uh, in, a, in a cell, we, we only clone the region, the section which code for protein. Introns does not code for protein, so we don't need to clone that. We need to clone the exons only, right? So how to achieve that? The way to achieve it that we can get the exons only after the maturation of mRNA, right? But we cannot use mRNA for the recombinant DNA technology. We need to use DNA. So how to produce DNA which replicates the structure of mRNA? That means the feature of only exons in the mRNA. There is a way to do that. And the way is to produce the DNA from that mature mRNA. So let's say this is the mature mRNA with only exons present. With only exons present, mature mRNA. Now what we'll do, we take this mRNA as a template and we produce a DNA strand produce a DNA strand this is the RNA we take it as a template and we produce a DNA strand using this mRNA as a template and this is a single stranded DNA that will be produced so we can produce DNA from mRNA as a template and that for this production to happen we need a specific enzyme called reverse transcriptase enzyme so we use reverse transcriptase enzyme to produce the single stranded dna using mrna as a template and in this situation we have a rna dna hybrid now what we do we separate these two strands we we break down this dna strand uh, these rna strands completely with rna's h you know rna's h is a RNA breakdown enzyme, so RNA is enzyme which will cleave RNA ribonucleotide so it will cleave and chew up the RNA strand leaving only this single stranded DNA. Now we take this other DNA strand as a template and prepare the opposite strand that is a complementary strand using it as a template. So now what we have, we have a double stranded DNA which is prepared using that mature mRNA with only exons as a template. So what we can say that this DNA contains only the portions which are coding in nature. So now if we produce DNA segments like that then we can put it into the vector. How? Again cleaving with restriction enzymes with vector as well as this we add them with ligase to join them then we put the vectors into the host and we can grow them and as it only contains coding segments it can easily code for mRNA that can be uh, translated into proteins so proteins will be produced inside cell we using this process that is called complementary DNA library because the DNA that we produce using RNA as a template is known as complementary DNA and we use complementary DNA to produce the library of only the segment which is coding for eukaryotic cells that's why it's known as cDNA library or complementary DNA library. So complementary DNA library only showcase those sections or elements of the DNA which are only coding but genomic DNA library represents all the genetic content of an organism okay. Genomic DNA library is much more complicated while complementary DNA library is simple it does not contain so much of different DNAs. Genomic DNA library can be occurred and done for prokaryotes and eukaryotes while cDNA library is not required for the prokaryotes because they don't have introns and exons. They have all the coding segments only. So the genomic DNA library can act as a cDNA library. Same thing for the prokaryotes. But for eukaryotes, we need to do cDNA library to release some, uh, to, to exclude some of those uh, complications to exclude the introns okay and we do that for expression purpose and in this case we do this for multiple different purpose so these are uh, the properties of uh, the gene libraries and genetic libraries that we know of I hope this video helps you if you like this video please hit the like button make this channel keep growing hit the subscribe button there you know it's it's everywhere actually you can hit this and you can get actually it's it's, it's positive you can get more video updates like that soon 
Thank you.